What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I want to show you how this credit card got me free first class tickets. All right, so I want to talk about this credit card and give you some tips on hacking these suckers. This is actually by Chase. It is the Business Preferred Inc. card. So that doesn't necessarily mean everyone will get it, but I think a lot more people can get this card than you might expect. And actually, this card uh, was uh, pointed out to me by a buddy of mine who tends to do a lot of travel hacking via credit cards. This one is particularly powerful. So I've got some notes here because I don't want to miss anything. I probably will because I'm kind of dumb. But let me explain to you a couple of things. And I think hopefully you will get some ideas on basically how you can travel for free by just having this credit card. So in the past, I have been kind of reluctant to get new credit cards. It's kind of a hassle. You got to figure out where you're changing uh, credit card subscriptions, you know, the renewals and things like that, like your Netflix account or maybe your online Google storage. Um, so I just kind of avoided it. And it wasn't really until my buddy was telling me about all these vacations every summer that he and his wife were taking, uh, basically by hacking credit card travel rewards. Now, this is the one he pointed out as basically the most powerful. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how I use this. So Chase Business Preferred Inc., first of all, is their business credit card. Now, if you do have a small business, you can get this card and that's gonna be pretty easy. However, you don't have to own a small business to get it. And so I have seen a number of sites where they kind of talk about what you need to do to get this. So let's say you tutor on the side or you're a small uh, or a sole proprietor, small business, that kind of thing. Uh, those types of things work. Maybe you run an eBay um, endeavor, you know, those types of things. You don't necessarily have to have an uh, S Corp or C Corp to get this, but you're probably going to have to have some sort of external income to your earned income in order to get it. Now, uh, like I said, look online for kind of guidance around that, but uh, you don't necessarily need to have kind of the traditional things. Now, the big thing about this is that you get bonus points when you apply and approve, are approved and actually go through kind of that introductory period uh, where you qualify for bonus points. And this one has an incredible 80,000 bonus point incentives. Now you've got to do a couple things to get it, but we'll get to the conversion on what those bonus points are. But you'll get 80,000 bonus points after you spend $5,000 on purchases in the first three months. So when you get to card, you have 90 days to put $5,000 on it. Now for a lot of people, uh, you might just have regular charges. I mean, that's only, you know, 1500 bucks a month, r roughly, in regular spending that you would have to put on that. Now, for me, because I have a small business and I do a lot of traveling, that's going to be really easy, not to mention just my personal spending uh, if you wanted to tilt it to take advantage of that. In fact, uh, my buddy, who does not have that kind of spending, ended up asking uh, his family you know, if he could put some of their charges on his credit card and then they would pay him cash just to make sure that he got to the $5,000, but for a lot of people it won't be an issue. Now, once you do that, you will also get some points for spending some of that money. Now, actually, what ends up happening is you have a 3X accelerator on points if per dollar that you spend uh, on the first $150,000 spent on combined purchases on travel, shipping purchases, internet, cable, phone services, uh, advertising purchases made with social media sites and search engines. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what all that means, but basically it sounds like, you know, what I was able to figure out is, you know, if I were charging my internet provider and my cell phone to this, I was getting three points for every dollar. So that's a nice way to kind of get a little boost. Now let's just kind of round up here and make this a little simple. So let's say you were getting that three X kicker on the first $5,000, that $5,000 you were spending. Well, that's going to be another 15,000 points. So 80,000 points at the end of that period for qualifying plus 15,000 points means you have 95,000 points right out of the gate. You haven't done anything new for it. You haven't changed your spending. Uh, you have nearly 100,000 bonus points. Now, the question is, what does that do for you? Having 95,000 bonus points, is, which is what I did. On top of that, I actually spent more than the $5,000, so uh, I had over 100,000 uh, points by the time I was working on my little travel hack, but that's pretty awesome, and I think that's kind of typical for this particular card. Now, I want to bring this up because what does that do? Well, there's a couple ways to redeem them, and how you redeem them is going to affect what it's worth. So, first of all, let's talk about the Chase reward site. So Chase has their own site. You can log in and it'll show you your points. They have a variety of travel related and uh, 
you know, even goods, like you can get bows, uh, noise canceling headphones and things like that. But I was mostly focused on the travel. So you can go in there and book plane tickets, hotel packages. They have some travel packages and the prices seem pretty good. And you can book it right there and all well and good. And you can actually get a really good deal. And what I think that they give you is they will give you 25% more in travel redemption credits for these points on the Business Preferred Inc. card. And so you actually get a little kicker when you book in the travel, travel rewards or the Chase Rewards site. Now, pros and cons of that. Uh, the pro is that it's really simple to do because you log in. The con is that it won't have everything. So if you live in a major city like I do here in Chicago, you know, we have United and American and Delta. And so one of the things, if you have a re rewards membership with one of those, you might be better off transferring the chase points out to use them directly there. But it does make it pretty nice. Now, what I ended up doing on my travel was I redeemed some of the points for a hotel in the reward site. Now, here's the pro and con. I got a sweet hotel at a sweet price. The problem is it was basically not cancelable or reschedulable. Uh, in fact, when I looked at doing it, because I thought, oh, maybe I'll uh, change it a day here. Um, normally, you would be able to do that on any site and, in fact, get your points back and just reply them again. But in this particular case, it was going to cost me $200 to change it. So I don't know if that's a strict policy when using the Chase Rewards Redemption site. But one of the things that you want to do is if you do use it, you want to really make sure that you're going to stick with that schedule because, as far as I can tell, the cancellation penalties are pretty onerous. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't have some great deals, and I was still really, really happy with the hotel I booked on there. Okay, let's get to the bigger travel hack. And um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but how I turn this into first class tickets. Now you don't have to transfer these into first class tickets, but that's usually how I like to fly just because, you know, I tend to travel a lot and uh, you kind of get crammed up and it really uh, grates on me when you have to travel a lot and you have to do a lot of coach traveling. So when I can get an upgrade, it really means a lot to me. So what I have is also a United membership, United Mileage Plus membership because United is a hub here in Chicago. And this uh, Chase card and United is a direct partner, which means I can go into my Chase account or my United account and transfer points um, out of Chase into my United account. And then I can redeem them directly on the United website. Now, when you redeem points for travel on United, it will actually ask you as you're going through the reservation system, are you looking to pay for tickets or are you looking to redeem points? And it will give you the same outputs, but it will just equalize things to points. So instead of saying, hey, this is a $295 trip, it'll tell you how many points it takes to redeem there. Okay, so what I was doing, and you may recall that last summer I went to, this past summer I went to San Diego and I thought, hey, I've got all these points in here, maybe I could use them for that. And so what I found was that most domestic travel, at least from Chicago, now remember that's a hub, ends up being in redeemed points 12,000, usually I found 12,500 points per leg, so one way, say Chicago to a destination, up to about 25,000 points. So from Chicago to San Diego was a 25,000 point redemption, but I also looked at like Chicago to um, Florida and that one was like 12,500 points. So I think it depends on the, the route a little bit, but you're gonna wanna come back. And so that's gonna be another 25,000 points. So for me to fly round trip to San Diego in economy class was gonna be 50,000 point redemption, which I had on here. Now, the cool thing about it is that you can also look at the points redemptions required for the upgraded economy plus and in first class. And what it was, was 50,000 points uh, first class to go from Chicago to San Diego and 50,000 points to go from uh, San Diego to Chicago. Now, what I think they do, and, I, and don't quote me on this, but what I think they do is they generally show you the points based on the route, not necessarily in a direct um, equivalent to whatever they're charging. So when I went back to the United site and instead of looking at points redemption, I looked at just the cost. What I found is that based on when I was going, the flight out from Chicago to San Diego was much cheaper than the flight back. And that might have been because they were different days or whatever, or kind of maybe different um, distances to holidays or, or key days or whatever. So the flight uh, going was half the price of it coming back. And so what I figured out was I was actually better off redeeming points for my flight back and actually paying for my flight to San Diego. 
And what ended up happening was for a couple hundred bucks, I got my round trip ticket uh, first class both ways because I used the 50,000 points to get first class from uh, San Diego to Chicago, where that would have cost me like $560 just for that route. And it was only 200 something uh, to go to um, San Diego. So you wanna definitely do it that way. And you wanna know what the prices are to make sure that you're optimizing around it. Because if you redeem points for a ticket, you cannot upgrade that ticket. So if you've ever bought a ticket, say on United, like I have many times, you can decide later uh, if you want to upgrade to first class. And sometimes they send you offers, you know, hey, it's $65 to do it or 125 or 400 sometimes. And so you can kind of decide later if it makes sense. But you can never do that when you've booked a ticket with points. So if you do want to fly an upgraded um, class on an airline with points, you want to do it at the time of booking. So that was kind of nice because I got my first class ticket. I used 50,000 points. I actually think I got better value than what they're advertising. And so it was kind of a nice way to do it. And then I, I did get my uh, seat that I wanted uh, going out for, you know, only a couple hundred bucks. Now I could have burned all 100,000 points and flown uh, on points both ways, but I don't think it was mathematically ideal. You might want to correct me on that. So the key here is how do you hack the credit card in the future? because I burned a lot of points. Now, one of the things that you don't have to do is spend all your points to get an upgraded ticket. And what my, my buddy does is actually, he looks for those 12 or 13,000 point tickets, kind of determines his vacation based on where those locations are. And so him and his wife will go for 25,000 points there and 25,000 points back. So you've only used 50,000 points, and then he'll use another 50,000 points to book the hotel. So travel and accommodations are usually taken care of. Now you say, hey, Pete, well, then you've used all your points and that doesn't do me a lot of good. What you can do are a couple of other things to get some other big uh, swaths of points here is one, you can refer people. And so what he did is he referred me and we each got uh, some incentive points for that. I think he got 20,000 points for this particular card. So that's uh, basically another one-way domestic airline ticket for him just for referring. And I am gonna put a link in the description below if you wanna apply for this card and just be aware that I might be getting some points for that if you click through it, but I appreciate it if you do because that helps support me at the channel. It shoots them all cool video. Um, but I might, I don't know. So, uh, but I will put a link there. The other thing that he does is he applies for another credit card. So Chase has a 524 rule where you, I, I believe that's the rule, where you can only apply for up to five cards every 24 months. But because uh, each card has its own uh, incentive structure, that might be enough to get you the vacation for the following year. And so what he does is uh, on about an annual basis, applies for a new Chase card, uses the points to get his vacation, and he's still within the 524 rule without a problem. On top of that, if you get a card and you have a spouse or a domestic partner or something like that, you can actually refer them. So you'll get the incentive points back to you. They will get another card with their new points. Let's say it's 60,000 for the Chase Sapphire Preferred or something like that. It's not as many points, but if you get 10 or $15,000 for the referral plus 60,000 points and then your spouse gets uh, the 60,000 points and then refers you for your next card, you're kind of rotating anywhere from 70 to 80,000 points a year. Now, the other thing that some of these cards have are annual fees, and this one does, and they can be fairly onerous, you know, anywhere from $99 to $450. But you wanna look at what they will charge you in the first year because maybe it's worth it even still. Uh, the other thing that you wanna do is cancel before your uh, anniversary so that you can avoid that fee. And sometimes Chase might even waive that fee and allow you to keep that card open, but even still, uh, it can be worth it. Now, I think a lot of people will look at the strategy and say, hey, I'm kind of flipping credit cards every year. Isn't that gonna demolish my credit score? Well, it generally won't. Inquiries and applications uh, for lines of credit really don't count that much on your credit report and are, aren't reflected overly heavily in your credit score. So, but you might want to consider that, you know, especially if you're working on a lower credit or if you don't have the credit to do this, it's probably not going to be an option. But especially if you are kind of sensitive to two, three, four points, then maybe this isn't the strategy for you. Uh, but because you are generally dropping a credit card and opening another credit card, you're not really increasing your credit line that much. Uh, hopefully this is not increasing the amount of credit you're utilizing, your credit utilization rate hopefully isn't affected. But 
but it can be a really nice way and it can certainly be really convenient for some of us who uh, might otherwise pay $800 to $1,000 a year out of pocket for your typical annual vacation to not have to pay that at all, right? To do that on the dime of a big credit card company like Chase and Marriott or Delta. And, you know, a lot of people have different incentive points, but the Chase cards in particular give you a lot of points. So that's just one of the ways that I took this credit card, thanks to my buddy for recommending it, and turned it in to not only a first class ticket, but the hotel stay while I was there. And uh, I couldn't be happier. And, you know, we'll certainly consider the strategy moving forward as well. But uh, at least in the first six months of using this bad boy, I have been really, really thrilled. So, hey, like I said, if you want to support me, support the channel and uh, get this credit card, you can definitely check out the link in the description below. Uh, it definitely could help me out. So appreciate it. Peter Von Panda, out.